This is why empathy matters when it comes to dealing with narcissists. Most narcissists have a distorted sense of superiority. Is there anything you know about the main reason for their faith? What's more, it's baffling why they think they're the best individuals in the world. The ability to empathize with others is key, that's why. Narcissists realize the need for internal harmony and social harmony, thus they work on cultivating empathy. While narcissists may view empathy as a weakness in humanity, that doesn't stop them from pretending to have it. They do this to take advantage of our receptivity to feeling and our openness to emotion. They play on our more vulnerable emotions in an effort to manipulate and dominate us. They come up to us and attempt to earn our sympathy and cooperation by telling us horrible but fictional stories. They would fake a terminal sickness simply to keep us by their side. They'd cry in an effort to gain our sympathy. But this is all an act and a masterful presentation meant to evoke our compassion. Narcissists are aware of the power of eliciting feelings of pity or sympathy in order to exert power and control over others. Narcissists are great manipulators who study their victims in order to anticipate and exploit their every emotional need. Demonstrating superiority and grandeur over you is a source of self-validation for a narcissist. Narcissists take advantage of you and don't appreciate what you do for them. Therefore, grey-shaking the narcissist is critically important. Narcissists are left befuddled when we cut off their access to our emotions. Their superiority over us is starting to look questionable. As a result, grey rocking is a useful tool for escaping the sway of manipulative people. Narcissists lack the emotional intelligence to feel empathy for others. Therefore, they believe they are capable of anything they set their minds to. Empathy is seen as a flaw by narcissists. The fact that they can't feel empathy frees them to think only of themselves. No one is safe from being used as a stepping stone or an instrument of pain as they pursue their goals. A narcissist has no empathy for the people around them. While empathy prevents us from doing things, we may otherwise do. Having empathy allows us to control our impulses and avoid hurting others while prioritizing our own wants and desires. To the narcissist, the ability to empathize is a detriment since it prompts them to take into account the sentiments and viewpoints of others. Despite the narcissist's contempt and denigration, it is our empathy that draws them to us. Because of our compassion, the narcissist is drawn to us. Because of how empathetic we are, they can control and exploit us in other ways as well. We need to remember that narcissists' outward displays of happiness and optimism are just that, a mask. They put up a show of concern and enthusiasm even though they couldn't care less. They have an intense want to connect with others who are situated and are profoundly gratified when they do. Narcissists know they will never be happy or at peace, so they try to ensure that no one else ever is. Consequently, the genuine happiness and excitement you feel about life irritate many around you. This is why a narcissist will try to soak up all your positive qualities. Their mission is to strip you of your hope and happiness until nothing is left except misery and anguish. If you are a good person, a narcissist will seek you out. The reality is, unfortunately, like that. The kind of people they want to hire, good-natured people with a strong capacity for empathy are in high demand. It's precisely what they've been craving. Even though narcissists see our compassion and empathy as signs of weakness, we are much stronger than they will ever be. Putting other people first or giving them more importance than yourself takes guts. Supporting another person through their pain requires strength. The narcissist yearns for love, joy and optimism, but he or she can never find it within themselves. Be kind and compassionate, but only to those who deserve it. All in all, that's about it for today's video. 
Does this video hold your interest? Please let us know what you think by leaving a comment below and giving the video a thumbs up if it was helpful to you. Please subscribe and click the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our upcoming posts. I value your attention as always. Enjoy your day. How this simple act from you will make the narcissist completely obsessed with you. Everyone welcome. Your time in viewing this video is greatly appreciated. In today's video, we will examine one of the weaknesses of narcissists, which is their inability to quit thinking about you, regardless of whether the narcissist is a parent, friend, co-worker, family member, or romantic partner. Narcissists are emotionally cruel and manipulative because their ego is everything to them. Narcissists may resort to negative reinforcements as a form of punishment if they see that someone is attempting to overtake their superior status or is failing to provide them with sufficient acknowledgement. For the narcissist, boosting their own inflated sense of self sometimes means demeaning others. To elevate themselves, narcissists may resort to minimizing others, talking down to them, giving them backhanded compliments, or passing harsh judgment on others around them. First, I'd want to say that narcissists are the ones that typically leave other people with unresolved pain. Their victims are left in a state of anxiety and immobility, unable to stop thinking about the narcissist, the relationship, or what went wrong. Victims of narcissistic abuse may find it challenging and time-consuming to break free of the narcissist's mental hold on them. Know this, focusing on the narcissist or the past will get you nowhere. In the end, you'll find yourself back where you started. If you're always asking yourself, what could I have done differently? You're setting yourself up for self-doubt and self-blame. Then negative emotions such as despair and anxiety start to build up. If you give a narcissist permission to freely inhabit your mind and undermine you, they can control you even if they're not physically there. I get that transformation takes time, but you also need to do the work of identifying and removing the obstacles blocking your progress and replacing them with means that will propel you forward. The narcissist in today's video, however, is the one who can't stop thinking about you. Why is this happening? Now it's possible that dumping a narcissist before they dump you would have a long-lasting effect on the narcissist. Because you've deprived them of their one true happiness, they'll have a grudge against you forever. There was a golden opportunity for them to completely decimate you, and they let it slip through their fingers. You are someone who got away too soon, who left unfinished business in the narcissist's mind. The narcissist is then faced with a dilemma. Do they try to win you back, ruin you, or leave you for a while and come back to you when they are more prepared? The narcissist will continue to think about you, whether they are actively trying to win you back, attempting to harm you, or simply giving you space. You've become an obsession for the narcissist, and they won't be able to relax until they've had you back under their thumb. Narcissists have an unhealthy preoccupation with power, and if you get rid of them, you'll be taking it away from them. I've stated it before, but narcissist likes to feel like they're in power. They value the autonomy to decide how and when a relationship ends. The narcissist could care less about what you want or whether they injure you in the process. In fact, the more broken and hurt you are, the better for the narcissist. The plan is for the narcissist to end the relationship when they realize it's for their own good. They would have been idealistic if they hadn't stolen everything they could and left you when you were at your lowest. If things don't go as planned, the narcissist will not let you off the hook. Because of the gravity of the situation, it is essential that no contact be made. When you have completely severed all ties to the narcissist and blocked them wherever online, you have achieved zero contact. This will bring narcissists into devastation. It's the only way to avoid getting caught in the chaos that will ensue otherwise. 
If the narcissist initiates the breakup, it's because they've accepted that they can no longer manipulate you. As a result, the narcissist will react, and if you continue to associate with the same people or allow the narcissist continued access to you, everything they do will be designed to provoke an emotional response from you. This is true even if they put up a brave front and seem like everything is wonderful. The narcissist wants to make you feel something, anything, angry or sad. Narcissists want us to feel bad and indirectly try to hurt us with their activities by ensuring we see them or hear about what they are up to. Therefore, it is important to learn to be unbothered by or emotionally detached from them if no contact is not an option. Therefore, when taking the no analysis first posture, it is essential to either refrain from physical contact altogether or keep an emotional distance. When the narcissist is preoccupied with their own dilemma because of you, they will make you the focus of attention and force them to hold all future supplies to the same standard as you. If the narcissist thinks about you, it will cause irritation, wrath, or even urinating. It is also futile that providing the narcissist with an explanation for why you're breaking up with them won't make any difference. They will never accept responsibility, and no explanation will ever be adequate in their eyes. They want you back so they can discard you when the time comes, because they believe authority belongs only to them. Dominance is at the heart of the problem. If you want to leave an impact on a narcissist, be the one to throw them away first. Because they can't stop thinking about you, the narcissist will spend time agonizing about what they should have done. The narcissist will always hold you up as the pinnacle of perfection. Unfortunately, the topic for today has come to an end. Sincerely, I hope this has been informative. I value your time and attention, so if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and activate the notification bell to be notified of more like this. Thank you for watching. Narcissists will leave you alone when they know they have lost you. I'm delighted you could make it today. Thanks a ton for taking the time to check out this video. Today, I'd want to talk about the behaviours a narcissist displays after they've abandoned you. To what end do they evaluate whether you're still useful for them or not? To what extent do they rely on these methods to determine which target they will go to next? But narcissists can't help but feel good about themselves when they get compliments from others. Sometimes, though, the narcissist may fail to take control of someone fully, and if you're one of those fortunate few, you may notice that narcissists will slowly pull away from you. Narcissists think that they will not be able to get you again, that's why. As I said many times, the best way to avoid narcissism is to cut off all of their resources. Narcissists are notoriously bad at maintaining relationships when there is nothing more for them to gain. Since narcissists don't waste time on people who aren't interested in them or don't care about them, they'd rapidly grow uninterested in others. Narcissists are very careful with how they use their time and resources, so if you're not providing the narcissist with what they need to keep going, you're a burden and the narcissist doesn't want you around anymore. Narcissists are emotionally manipulative people who are obsessed with gaining power and influence. This person gets a lot of narcissistic supply when they pull your strings and take you on an emotional roller coaster. They feel superior because they know they can make you laugh, cry, fall, stand and laugh again. The more skillful they are at manipulating you into keeping them around, the more likely they will succeed in eliciting tears, shouts, despair, remorse and depression. This gives them confidence that they can keep teasing you. In the end, it comes down to having control. To satisfy their egotistical needs, narcissists resort to manipulating others emotionally. They like the idea that they can manage our mindset, behaviour and way of life. It seems they always know what to say and do to get a rise out of you. 
The importance of our response to the narcissist cannot be overstated. The narcissist thinks they have you where they want you if they can get you to react to them or manipulate you. A narcissist will take advantage of the trust and affection they have earned from you. Those who manipulate others always have a great sense of superiority. All that a narcissist wants from you is for you to feel a certain way. Now that you know a narcissist is your enemy, you must learn to control your feelings. Do not expect the narcissist to take responsibility for their actions. On the other hand, narcissists are at a loss when they can no longer read our reactions or interpret our intentions. I can only imagine how frustrating it is for them to be around us constantly and find nothing to latch on to. Narcissists are incapable of manipulation or deception since doing so causes them severe discomfort. Anyone who causes a narcissist discomfort is instantly perceived as an insult and must be removed. Perhaps the narcissists will move on or remove themselves. A narcissist may not take instant vengeance, but they will never forget or forgive. This means they will continue to look for opportunities to take advantage of you in the future. However, there are times when the narcissist only wants to get rid of you, regardless of the means necessary. Who the narcissist is, how important you are to them, and how deeply you've wounded their ego are all variables. Narcissists are selective about the battles they choose to fight, and the ones they decide can wait. In my limited experience, I've noticed that narcissists are more sensitive to criticism from those they once held sway over, but now don't. It would be excellent if everyone could learn to recognize narcissists fast and begin employing the grave locking technique right away, as exposing one's emotions around them is one of the worst mistakes one can make. Narcissists place a high value on our emotional reactions in determining whether or not they are winning. I've heard of people who faked certain feelings to trick a narcissist into thinking that they, the narcissist, are the one in charge to get an advantage. This usually backfires. On the other hand, understanding their methods to play on our emotions will give us an advantage. But that's a story for another time. You have to learn to keep your emotions in check and show the narcissist only the version of you that you want them to see. However, it's best to just grey rock a narcissist as they'll rapidly grow miserable in your company if they feel unappreciated. In my experience, the best thing to deal with a narcissist is by not doing anything at all. Stay non-reactive. That includes every one of you. You can still manage how you feel and act, regardless of whether or not the narcissist you've dated in the past thinks they have total power over you. When you turn off the emotional tap, perhaps it stays off for good. As soon as the narcissist decides you are no longer valuable to them, you will feel it. If they cut you before, they probably know just how to push your buttons to get what they want. For some time, they won't believe you've completed the task. But once they realize you are onto them, they will cease harassing you. A major defeat in their eyes is that they can no longer manipulate you. You have broken free of the emotional control of that individual or group. Narcissists will want to get rid of you or, at the very least, ignore you if they are no longer able to control you. You may think that cutting off all contact with a narcissist is the best way to protect yourself from them. And while that may be true for the person who has chosen to do so, keep in mind that the narcissist still considers you to be their property because they believe they can maintain some measure of control over you even if you don't communicate with them. Narcissists often engage in self-delusion, that's why. The important thing is that we are happy and successful without them. If you don't have any established relationships, you should move slowly while meeting new people. Since narcissists are so pervasive, it's important to master not only recognizing them, but also regulating our emotions in their presence. Don't give them what they want, or even be very proud of them. 
This could also lead to an impression of being uncaring and uninterested. Since nothing exciting is occurring, you might as well be a rock, hence the term grey rocking. At last, you have the knowledge of what narcissists need to ensure their own security and faith in their capacity to control you. They rely on our emotions and reactions completely. If we can maintain some emotional distance, the narcissist won't be able to use that to acquire control over us. If you give a narcissist the opportunity to manipulate and dominate you, they will feel as though they have you right where they want you. In the event that they are unable to do either, they will assume that you are gone forever. Narcissists hate setbacks because it reduces the number of individuals available for them to abuse, a phenomenon known as the narcissistic supply curve. Whoever manages to escape is the luckiest. My sincere wish is that you have found this to be enlightening. Please click the like button if you found this interesting. And please don't hesitate to share your thoughts and experiences by leaving your comments below. I value your input. Thanks for watching. The three covert ways narcissists always use to hide their bad traits. Welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about the three different personalities that covert narcissists might adopt. When you understand a narcissist's worldview, you can predict their behavior with remarkable accuracy. To an extreme degree, narcissists may be predicted in terms of their behavior and reactions. The covert narcissist has only three options available to him or her. Because they are radicals, that's why. Neither of them has anything in common. It covers the full range of outcomes, from the desirable to the repulsive. There are three guises the narcissist might adopt, the heroic, the victim, or the evil. As we all know, only their closest friends and family members ever get to see their actual, terrible faces. But when they're in public, they choose one of two roles, hero or victim. In addition, some narcissists tend toward more extreme behavior than others. The other two masks are used to deceive others, while the third is their true wicked face. Narcissists often have a handy face of the victim they can use to make themselves feel better about their own behavior, so let's examine that first. Nonetheless, some narcissists may develop a more permanent version of this face. People who are narcissists in this sense are individuals who, no matter how poor their health or their situation, never stop trying to prove their worth to the world, those who are physically or mentally unable to do so. These people spread the news far and wide in the hopes that people would feel sorry for them and offer assistance in exchange for anything of value. This may be a ruse to make them seem harmless. It's also possible that your unpleasantness and discontent stem from something else. When the person needs to justify their actions or refuses to help you, they may always point to their illness as an excuse. They enjoy the limelight that comes with playing the victim and have no plans to take accountability for their conduct. Narcissists enjoy a nice pity party because it allows them to receive the adoration and sympathy they crave. Beyond that, however, some narcissists are satisfied with playing the victim, especially when they are in the company of those who will take their side. Whether one acts unhappy, others will repeatedly ask if they are okay and may go out of their way to try to make them feel better. They may pretend to be insecure or unhappy with their appearance, so they might receive more compliments. These narcissists are a never-ending burden on society because of how desperate they are for love and attention. Furthermore, narcissists favor the part of the victim over that of the villain. Whenever something negative occurs, they are quick to point fingers at someone else. In order to shield themselves from criticism, they would defame you. Narcissists, on the other hand, don't care so much about the method as much as a result. The face of the victim strategy succeeds because the target is portrayed as helpless rather than malicious. 
A narcissist's second mask of choice is that of a hero or a charming, helpful and hilarious person. They are masters at making guests feel welcome and important. When approached for help or guidance, they are always willing to provide it. It's possible they'll seem genuinely interested in learning more, worried about the welfare of the group and willing to pitch in wherever assistance is required. They do that to everyone else, really, but as covert narcissists, their closest friends and family members are the exceptions. Their closest friends and family members are being put in second place to random strangers. As I said, those close to the narcissist are exposed to the narcissist's real face. Now let's talk about this. At the conclusion of it all, it is the face of evil that emerges victorious. Behind the disguise is a manipulative liar. It's the one they try to hide because they're so ashamed of it. A person with the outward appearance of evil is one who takes joy in the pain of others and their own failure. The despicable character wants to conquer the world because they think they deserve all the credit for their accomplishments. The evil in the world is reflected in the face of evil's sinister grins and fleeting looks. Only the unlucky ones who come into contact with them ever see their true evil face. As you can see, the covert narcissist can take on many distinct personas, each one revealing a different facet of their personality. The first two characteristics are just a mask for their true, unpleasant and spiteful personality. There is nothing genuine about a narcissist. This is a horrible fact, but it's also the main reason we need to keep our distance. Well, I think this is all the time I can devote to this today. I hope everyone found this to be informative. If yes, please click the like button to show that you appreciate my work. In the comment section down below, I'd like you to tell me what you're thinking. I hope you all have a fantastic week. Thanks. When the narcissist has no one to depend on, this is what happens. Please allow me to say hello, and I appreciate your presence here. I appreciate all of you who have stuck with me for this long, so let's get to the point. To illustrate, I'd want to talk about what happens in the mind of narcissists when they're alone. Neither of them is monogamous, and neither of them has any living children or grandchildren from a previous relationship. Consequently, they may have many acquaintances but no actual friends. In addition, in my observation, covert narcissists tend to hide their genuine nature when they are with their immediate family members. Their husbands and children are the only recipients of their complete generosity. The main reason is that they worry about being disowned by family and friends at home if they expose their true colours. They realise that those who are close to them may discover how bad the narcissist really is. Narcissists tend to bottle up a lot of negative emotions, and if they don't get them out at least periodically, they could explode. Therefore, they need an easy target to channel their resentment and anger. A grandiose narcissist can be just as toxic in close relationships as they are in the outside world. A covert narcissist, however, is limited in both the time and people to whom they can express their hatred and hostility. Aside from that, they mask everything with a beautiful facade. As a result, they go to great lengths to convince their prey to enter into a monogamous relationship, preferably marriage. They need someone they can be cold and brutal in private or in their safe area without fear of repercussions. The problem arises when they don't have anybody to take their aggression out on right away and we have to wonder how they cope. It's difficult to tell where you stand with covert narcissists since they put on a pleasant facade for everyone else's sake. Due to the importance the covert narcissist places on their own image and reputation, all they want is to be depicted as the hero, or if not, the act as the victim, never as the villain or the instigator. They put on a happy face even if they're miserable. The covert narcissist is in a tough spot 
when they are fully alone. They don't have somebody they can rely on or a reliable connection to in times of need. Since they have nothing else to liven up their days, they create drama wherever they can, be it at work, in their church, or among friends and family. Since covert narcissist is more likely to act serious and reserved when they are alone, this is especially true when they are around individuals who make them uncomfortable or who have offended them. When asked how they are doing, they will often complain of feeling tired or ill. Narcissists can put on an act of calm or even distance themselves from others, but this is really a mask for their inner turmoil and their desire to bring pain to others around them. Furthermore, the covert narcissist, who is unable to fully unleash the beast inside them, begins to project a pessimistic attitude. Those sensitive to their presence will note a deepening of the night. As their mask begins to slip, covert narcissists must divert attention away from themselves. They cause issues because they always attribute blame to external factors. This usually occurs to the person who has angered or unnerved the narcissist. For this reason, they begin plotting ways to either neutralize the threat or turn the local populace against them. When they're around this individual they absolutely despise, they become mute at the most inopportune moments. Having feelings for this person will surely prevent you from functioning normally. If a narcissist fails to win over the other person's trust on his or her own, he or she may resort to using a proxy, usually a close friend, lover or family member. Since narcissists rarely show open anger against others, it is impossible to know what drives them. But the narcissist sees all of their connections as strategic and they will use others against you if they can. Narcissists are typically self-destructive. To further their personal vendetta, some people will try to keep you from communicating with your loved ones. The most cunning thieves are narcissists who steal your loved ones right out from under your nose with the intent to cause you harm and alienate you from others. The trouble the covert narcissist generates outside of their comfort zone is much greater than the trouble they cause inside of it. When they have someone they can trust in their own area, they are better able to handle the challenges of social engagement. They can take the teasing in stride, since they have plans to exact revenge on their loved ones. The narcissist will never forgive those who have harmed them, and will wait patiently for the right moment to exact their vengeance. The covert narcissist is an astute and devious person. Those individuals are working hard to cultivate an impeccable reputation in the hopes that others will find them endearing and adore them. Who, exactly, are the folks who deceive their partners into thinking everything is alright when it obviously isn't? The narcissist's created persona is usually well-liked and respected even by those who don't know the narcissist personally. Covert narcissists, however, employ the same love-bombing tactics as their more obvious counterparts. Even if they never raise their voice or a finger to you, they will still try to manipulate you with lies and put you down. It may be out of sight, but its success is assuredly growing in the shadows. Even when they're by themselves, their negative emotions leak out into the world and affect the people they interact with. This means that even if we decide to practice no contact with a narcissist, we need still keep a safe distance from them. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Please click the like button if you found this interesting. And please don't hesitate to share your thoughts and experiences by leaving your comments below. I value your input. Thanks for watching.